Welcome to the Aceman, everybody. It's time to go behind the funny. This is Scott Higgins. And this is Ace Aceto. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for downloading us. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it so very much. And if you have a moment, please give us that five-star written review wherever you download your podcast. It's a great way to help the podcast. If you want to help us out another way, tell a friend. We all learn about podcasts from our friends' recommendations, and that's a way you can help us out by recommending us to a friend. And the last way, if you really enjoy the show, is to go to our Patreon page and become a patron. And that is at www.patreon.com forward slash behind the funny. And what that will get you, it's one simple giving level, $5 a month. That will get you a T-shirt or a mug, some sort of merchandise, as well as unlocking bonus content that only our patrons can access. Thank you so much for supporting us. If you want to reach out, you got a question for us, you got a comment, anything, please send us an email at behindthefunnypod at gmail.com. And now, enjoy the show. Be careful, he's... And and Scott Higgins, both of them coked up out of their minds. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, listen to you. (laughs) Down in the basement. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I think we should call this the acement. The acement, yes. Yeah, what do you think oh, there, huh? I like that. I the acement know. studios. Oh. Excuse me, I'm drinking beer. <laughs> Hold on a we, we usually drink bourbon on yeah, our yeah, end right. the podcast, so That's all right. feel free to enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you shoot an eight ball if you want. We don't care, as long as it's good stories. <laughs> Welcome one, welcome all, welcome <laughs> to the Behind the Funny Podcast. What the hell was that? I wanted to throw like you like the Tom Crier. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. ye. Welcome I, to the Acement. <laughs> I wanted to throw you off a little bit. Tonight. Yeah, you always do. Thanks. <laughs> no problem, buddy. That. But thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys are enjoying the new episodes for 2023. Yeah. Man, last week was a lot of fun talking about Saturday Night Live season 10. Yeah. I mean, you, the guys that we had in Brendan Kirby, Brian Mulhern, and Dan Smith did a great job helping us analyze that season, man. That was a lot, a lot of fun. And I love how, you know, because we're big shots now, we have an intern. I love how our intern. Oh, I said Haley. we Haley should have our, it. we should have our intern pull clips and blah blah blah, and then she goes okay, and then she pulled some amazing clips. It was awesome, Haley. Haley, uh, we got we love you already. Yes, you know, she, it's been two weeks, and we love her. She instantly knows us. Yes, <laughs> she. I love it. Yeah, great job. So happy to have her on board. Yep, doing fabulous. But you know what we, else we're happy to have on board? Jefferson's. Uh. <laughs> I skipped. Hey, I'm sorry. No, I'm glad you, I was going to say hey, say our bourbon date this week is, uh, you know, a dear old friend that we just love having back. And this is her classy older sister. Yeah, this is like the makeover classy older sister that you have a crush on. This is the Phoebe Cates coming out of the pool. <laughs> Of bourbon Moving in stereo. <laughs> uh, Jefferson's Reserve, very rare custom barrel, twin oak. Uh, delicious. Oh, so delicious. Absolutely but, you delicious. Know, someday they will recognize how much we love them and be a sponsor and throw us money, which would be fantastic. But we'll, yep. we'll just keep But until drinking. then, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, keep drinking. Paying. Clinkies. Keep clinking. And keep enjoying. Yes. And uh, and so we're excited this week, as we are every week, because our guest comes to us all the way from New Jersey. And yes. I don't know if you want to talk about how we found him, because um, someone reached out, right? Yeah, someone reached out and said, w- would you guys be interested in, in talking to this comedian? And... Uh, you know, once we we looked at him, my God, this guy is one. He's got a, a special out. He does public speaking. Yeah. Um. He he's he's a guy that you know. I instantly hated him because he's very successful and he's done very well for himself. <laughs> yeah. And then I watch his clips. And I'm like, oh, I like him now. Yeah. You know. And you know what? He is what our buddy Mike Meyer, M- Mike uh, Murray, aspires to be. Yes. Successful. Yes! Perfect. Right. You know. Yeah. No. I, I'm joking because he's one of those. You know. Com- Comedians are so 
jealous yeah, at Patty. time. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's done so much. Yeah. And his comedy is so funny yeah. that I'm like, yes, I want to talk to this guy. Absolutely. I was yeah. excited that, and I was glad we were able to get him on, you know, as quickly as we were. Absolutely. You know, we yeah. were able to put it together as fast. Uh, thank you to Rebecca, who you know, coordinated this for us. Yeah. So, um, did a great job, but yeah, let's, uh, uh, so let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. Welcome to behind the funny podcast, Mike Cateo. Hey, what's up guys? Hey, hey Mike, uh, buddy. Um, thanks for joining. I, thanks for having me. Disclaimer. I'm not that successful. Um, <laughs> well, no, no it's you, a, you, it's you, a, it's you're supposed to ride that way. wave. you're supposed to ride that wave, yeah, when you're we supposed say to it. just go with it. Just like when you All make right. up your, yes, your credits, I'm, 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 <laughs> I make up credits all the time. We all do. Me? We all do. Yeah. I, I've had bookers make up credits. I walked into one <laughs> show and it was like, as seen on Showtime, it was Cronin. I go, Mike, I've never been on Showtime. Don't fucking put that out. Yes. What are you, nuts? Yes. You know, because I don't want to get called out on it. When I hear people tell fake credits, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Have you ever had a crazy credit that somebody put for you? Uh, so, so I was, a uh, I, it was, it's back in like 2003, 2004. Um, I was doing a spot at this, uh, restaurant called Hamburger Harry's <laughs> in the city. And, yep. uh, the, the host goes, this guy, he's great. He has a comedy central special coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was two years into comedy. And, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember I I had such a good set that as people were walking out the door, they go, when is the special? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're like, don't hold your breath. I'm like, I don't know when it's coming out. Your right. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's up to the producers. Yeah, I, you know, they don't been, tell me. They've been they don't tell me it. that. Yeah, yeah. they've they yeah. been sitting on it for a while. I remember for the longest time when when satellite radio first came out, everybody was on oh yeah had that credit you know has yeah. been heard on xm satellite radio has been heard on sirius satellite radio everybody had that credit for a long time yeah. well and i remember there was an open mic around here i'll i won't mention names till after come the show. on mention names no, no. <laughs> we have out a few people they, over the they, years. they actually on. they actually photoshopped they took a picture of their radio no. and photoshopped their name on xm radio i'm like are you <laughs> kidding Seriously? me and it looked real too that that's <clears throat> kind of impressive. I had, I had um, so New Year's Eve 2005. I had my name on the marquee in the Laugh Factory. Wow! And I took. I it was a surprise to me. New Year's Day, I turned the corner and saw my name, and I started taking pictures with an actual camera because <laughs> they didn't have cell phone cameras back then. Yep, right. And and so I and I put it up on Facebook and. Friend, comedian friends of mine were like, nice Photoshop job. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, actually, hey, actually, I it was comedian Michael Coltier, and they spelt it wrong. Yeah, right. So yeah. he just snapped a picture real quick. No, you turn around and you're like, listen, I slipped the guy that runs the marquee 20 bucks to put yeah. the letters up and then well, take them right for down. For five minutes. Yeah, so exactly. Like, just so I could get the it. pictures. Oh, so, so, Mike, you're in New Jersey? Yeah, I came up in New York. I grew up in New York. Okay. Um, I in the city, started, yeah, yeah, Staten Island. So All right. city adjacent, like yeah, yeah. Borough, I got, I got friends in Staten borough. Island. Do you? Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, there's a couple of comics I know from. Are they from Staten fist bumpers? Island. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> that's where it no. all started. Is that where? That's it where it all started. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so you said you started right around 2000, 2001. Um, I, I won amateur night at the Apollo in 2001. Oh, wow. And, and I was still doing it as a hobby. Like I wasn't pursuing it as a career. Yeah. And then in 2002, I ended up, I ended up getting HIV and I'm like, I, I'm oh, going to die. Let me just do comedy. <laughs> it's on my bucket list. Right. You know, it's so, amazing uh, how a deadly disease can inspire you to go after oh, your dreams. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I was 
I was working in Bellevue Hospital. I quit my job. I moved back home and I started doing stand up like my life depended on it. Because <laughs> it did, right? <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> kind of. <Yeah, but, laughs> what, too soon? Too soon. Yeah. <laughs> were you, so were you funny growing up? Uh, I seem to think so. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not the funniest person in my family. I tell people this all the time. I, I was just, I, I could make people laugh. And my brother was the one who could make my mother laugh any moment of any day. I didn't yep. have that gift. Um, and I have a cousin who's a thousand times funnier than I am. I just made it a career and work at it. And, and yeah navigate every single joke and right analyze every single word and you yeah know. you were you put the work in some right. people are naturally funny but you know we've all had the people that come up to us after a show and say oh my friends tell me i'm funny i should do comedy and then they they get up there and they don't do so well because their I, friends I aren't like, in the audience i like to encourage people to do that like you think you oh, yeah. should do it do it Let we me do that and then i go and heckle them <laughs> <laughs> now you yeah. said that your brother is your brother i didn't it was he older or younger my i'm the oldest so my my baby brother is six foot two i'm five foot seven um, <laughs> yeah i got and, one of them yes, i was just uh, gonna say same thing <laughs> he, he i he is seven years younger than me and okay uh, when I was about seven or eight, I, I grew up with a disability. So um, when I was about seven or eight, I, I realized people wanted to feel sorry for me. But if I could make them laugh, yep. they, it, it's hard to feel sorry for people when they're funny. Right. Um, so yeah, you, I, it disarms them by making them laugh and making them be like, oh, all right. He's, he's, he's just normal. like me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's normal. Right. <laughs> Did that seven-year-old just tell a dick joke? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Listen to the mouth on that kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was blowing this guy. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> How does voice get so deep? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so grandma was tickling my balls. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so you said, you said what, you got HIV, when was it? uh 2002 i was 25 wow wow i mean honestly not to sound flippant about it but if if you're ever going to get it that then forward is the time to get it because right? it's yeah it's it wasn't a death sentence at that point they had but plenty it felt of like it was oh yeah i'm sure oh, i'm that. sure but there were plenty of medications and right. cocktails that that right. were being given on a regular basis that not the good feeling cocktails though. no no Those no were yeah right <laughs> the well, that's life-saving you... cocktails right <laughs> yeah life-saving cocktails like was, jefferson wasn't exactly a manhattan <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> straight up oh, the best. well and depending it could have been a cocktail that got you the hiv the True. Was yeah, when, I went, when i went to get the diagnosis mm -hmm. they they ended up bringing in me into a room and i was part of a study so i would go there every six months and get tested yep and I went and they sat me down and they go, your test came back negative. I'm like, oh, my God, such a relief. I looked down at the test. It was the one from six months ago. Oh, get out. No, I swear to God. And uh, I said, um, I think this is the wrong test. Yeah. And she goes, oh, my God, so embarrassing. Hold on. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure you're fine. And then she left for like an hour. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then she Only came me. back and said it was positive. And then she came back and said, you're going to die. Oh, my God. No, she didn't say that. no I was going to say. But no, but that's what it felt like. I'm sure. Was yeah, yeah. Ratchet. And, and I worked as a social worker with people with AIDS. So, like, I saw it day in and day out. Right. Yeah, you saw what it could do to people. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, once you got that diagnosis, you know, were you still going up and doing comedy at that well, time? Well, that's what he said. That's what made him kind of really that's get serious about it. it. Seriously, yeah. Now, um, now, so did you do material about it? 
No. That's what, yeah. well, that's what I was kind of transitioning to, to was, you know, while you're up on stage trying to be funny, that's got to be sitting in the back of your mind. You know, how did it affect your performance mm. with that kind of weighing on you? I was like, I, like I said before, I was telling jokes like my life depended on it. I, so I, you were giving everything I, to your performance at that point. Yeah, and and I I performed like so I was still using drugs and alcohol when I got mm -hmm. diagnosed. And okay. I didn't stop till I tried to stop in December two thousand three. So I was performing while I was high or drinking. I never did drugs or alcohol before a set, but mm -hmm. I did it after. Okay. So I get then that. Yeah. I, I, um, when I gave it up, I, I think I, I just put all my energy into stand up, and yeah. I did so many shows. That's how I got really good. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the best yeah. way to get good. The more time right? you're on stage, right. the more experience you're getting. You're right? hyper, you're hyper focused at that point. So, <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're putting everything into it. Now, when when did you kind of get to a point where you're like, you know what? I, I may be oh, not necessarily OK, but I'm going to last a little longer than maybe I thought I was going to. And, you know, I'm going to keep chipping away at this. Well, I always like I it was something that made me just feel like shit i can do this mm -hmm. i can if i'm gonna have a, a deadly disease i might as well like put all my energy into something i love and mm -hmm. stand up is the one thing like whenever tragedy happens in my life i always go back to stand up it's like the 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 mistress that will never let me down mm -hmm. so true. yeah true so I want to back up a little bit because sure. what made you get up on stage that first time that, you know, at Hamburger Harry's, you know, was yeah. it a, it was open mic night. What made you decide, you know what, I'm going to get up on stage. I think I can be funny. You or know, we, did, did you have friends that prodded right. you like everyone my has first, different reasons? My, my first first show ever was in 1995. Okay. Um, and I, w I was home for the summer. I was in the, I went to the Boston Comedy Club in Manhattan in Greenwich Village. Yep. And I, I did like a, I can't remember if it was a Brenner show or what, but there was a real audience mm -hmm. and I, I blew the light and I did pretty good mm -hmm. and I, I had fun. And so I went back and I thought, oh, I'm going to get a career out of this. Yep. And then I didn't do stand up for another six months. And I was a little delusional. I didn't realize the amount of dedication it takes to actually get somewhere. Yeah. 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 You have to constantly work at it. You can't just right. take it as uh, maybe I'll do it this month or, you know, and we've talked about it before. That's what separates comedians from people who just try it. Yeah. If you're a comedian you get off stage and whether you did great or whether you bombed, you're like, I got to get back up on stage. Cause if you did great, you got a taste of that high of mm -hmm. wanting to, Oh my God, I got to do that again. But if you bombed, you're sitting there going, I know I can do better than that. I will win them over, you know? And so either way you're back up on stage. It's the people that, you know, people, there's plenty of people that are like, Hey, it was on my bucket list. I tried it. I did it. You know, I did it for like six months and then I just moved on and did something yeah. else, you know, and we've, we know plenty of people that have done that too. Yeah. I now, quit for like, um, eight years, nine years. And I wow. thought I'd never go back. What was the thing that brought you back then? Um, my life fell apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I so lost that my, I quit my job. I, I broke up with a relationship. I, I, you know, I had to move back home to yeah. my parents. So I just, it was, my life was falling apart. Stand up loves me. Right. Like you said, it's the mistress. The that's mistress always called there. you back. Yeah. Right. right. Wow. And I'm glad I came back. I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. She always has a way, no matter what's happening in life. And we talked about it, you know, 
beforehand about, you know, if you deal with depression or you deal with other things, that's the one thing that for some reason kind of gives you a little bit of, you know, just peace if you will so right. some, some solitude you know when, when you're up there and you're you're you know you're delivering to that crowd and you're getting those laughs and you, you get that moment you kind of that's your moment where you, you feel where like you're, you're home you, you feel okay in that moment <laughs> in that one spot that most people would never want to be in public right, speaking right. and then add to that trying to make them laugh is the scariest thing in the world for most people but yet when we're up there that feels like the exact spot we're supposed to be yeah. How bad is it when you don't get a laugh in the first minute? How much do you sweat? Like, oh yeah. Well, you oh. know, I either sweat or I get angry at myself, and I, I kind of like my energy level kicks in, and then I'm like trying even harder, and I keep it's a, almost like a, a, I call it like a boxer where I'm like throwing punches, mm -hmm. you know, frantically trying to land a shot until I get one, and then I can fall into a pace and, and feel okay because like I'll, I'll deliver. Oh nope, nothing landed. I'll deliver the next one. Didn't land. Didn't land. Didn't land. Didn't land. <laughs> yeah. I, I, now I, all of a sudden, my you, speech pattern is speed faster. Bag. I'm sweating more, and then all of a sudden I hit one, and then I can slow back down into a regular pace and feel okay. But you're right. If it, you know, because in your mind, I know how I'm starting, and I always get a laugh here. I'll be okay. Right. And then when you don't get that. Or here's what worse for you, Mike. How about when you're doing one of those sets where you're going along and in the middle of your act, you have a joke that always gets a laugh. You know the joke <clears throat> is going to hit, and it doesn't. Yeah. You get nothing. That throws me off worse than anything. When I I'm like, I this is my gold. This is one of my best jokes. I know it's going to hit, and nothing happens. I go into my head and go, how the fuck did I mess that up? Like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. What, yes. What word did I put wrong? It yes. was my pacing. I I, I right. paused here. It, it that's what screwed it up because it always works when I say it this way. We're such self-hating Jews. I <laughs> I'm not sure, by the way. True. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, two of us, uh, uh, you know, two of our names end in vowels, and one's a Irishman. Hey, what can <laughs> I say? Self-hating Jews, right? Yeah, you, know. you self-hate, and we drink ourselves into yeah, exactly. hate. So it doesn't yeah, matter. Exactly. <laughs> just, you know, it's all the same hate at the end of the day. But so, no, I, I, you know, I, 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 I did that recently where jokes that are, I know always hit weren't quite hitting and then stuff that was kind of throwaway kind of it would seem to get the laugh and this the timing and the pacing of the whole set was kind of off yeah. and i walked off stage like oh my god that sucked and then we talk about this all the time and then i always go out front to to thank the crowd and you know talk to them and stuff as they're leaving and people are coming up like oh you were great that was so funny and i'm like did you watch the same show that i yeah. did because it did not feel that way at all right you know because i'm beating myself up because it did not feel good when i was up there but did all. it not feel good because they didn't laugh and maybe they were just smiling the whole time because no. we talked about those crowds it, too. it didn't feel good to me because they didn't laugh where i thought they should be laughing. right right yeah. that's what i want a silent audience yeah exactly yeah <laughs> well, i could do that if i oh, wanted i could me. silence them if i want we talked <laughs> we've talked about it before mike i i recorded a cd I purposely <laughs> recorded it. Love this story. I purposely recorded it in Portland, Maine, so I wouldn't be doing it locally. I wouldn't do local references. It would be, mm -hmm. you know, in Portland, Maine, usually was a great, great Always crowd. great crowds up there. Always. I, I hired, I don't know if you're familiar with Bob Marley, the comic. Mm -hmm. All right. I hired Bob Marley's uh, sound engineer. He came in. Two shows we had him come in for on a Friday night. First show. Four bachelorette parties in the crowd, yelling <laughs> shit out the whole fucking time. They were good. They were part of the show, though. So right. they, you know, I, I had to keep playing crowd work, which I didn't want on a CD. Second crowd comes in, smiled the entire time, did not laugh. I couldn't use one fucking audio clip from that. And <laughs> after afterwards, they literally are coming up to me going, oh, my God, you was so funny. I'm like, you could have fucking laughed. We said it was a CD. You should you should do a mystery science theater thing when you're when you're on the CD and then you go. And now they're really smiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Point. 
Yeah. This one that's, guy's cracking up on the inside. If uh-huh. you guys could see these people right now, they are <laughs> laughing their asses off inside. <laughs> In, on the inside. Yeah, I don't know. My wife inside. asked me, you don't think I'm funny? You didn't think that was funny? I'm like, I'm laughing on the inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You. Yeah, exactly. I, I, well, believe me, I wanted to say that to that second crowd. I'm dying in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In yeah, here. Inside. Now, when you were growing up, were you a comedy fan growing up? The, like, yeah, did you I, have people you listened to and liked and stuff? You know what? I didn't. Uh, yes. And I was I grew up in a very sports oriented family. And oh, yeah. I was I was not um, mm-hmm. because of the disability. It yeah. Just, well, if you're going to use that as an excuse. Right. I know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Triple card. Cripple yeah. card, don't leave yeah. what we got it. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, uh, your disability is what, though? Is it CP? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's I was in a car accident when I was 18 months old. And oh, wow. It's what were you doing driving at 18 months? Yeah. Yeah. Know, drinking. What was I doing drinking? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. So... And so that's how it that's how it happened. Was it was it? Yeah, um, I was I died. Literally, I died on on, on the table. They revived me. Wow. They, I died again. They revived me again. And so, uh, wow, you know, take a licking keeps on ticking. That's wow. impressive. You know, because you, you think about comedy, how quick witted. And fast you have to be thinking right when you're on stage and the fact that you went through something like that so young that you're able to develop into a person that can think into on his feet person. just stop after person yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no but a person that can think quickly on their on feet, feet yeah you know and, and do what you do is impressive because My- i mean let's let's face it the fact that you could feed yourself most people would be impressed but the fact that you can stand on stage you know and, that and get that, loud I yeah. always prefer when other people feed me. Yeah. And oh yeah. Who doesn't? You still milking that? Who oh, doesn't? Yeah. And I will. I will. I will start to drool on purpose just <laughs> to get, just to get someone to wipe your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow he's using it. That's awesome. I, I'd milk that shit for oh, everything it's worth if I could get away with it. <clears throat> so, but who did you have favorites growing up as, as um, a kid? You know, I loved I loved Pryor and R- William Robin Williams. Oh yeah, yeah. classics like yep. Robin Williams at the Met is my favorite genius. Yeah, he's just he's all over the place. I can I can't tell what's written and what's in the moment. Right, right. I and I'm with you, Mike. I had memorized that entire thing. I had it on cassette tape and I memorized it and I used to recite it to my, to my friends because that was one of those ones that I don't know what it was about it that, you know, the, the whole ending scene when he's having the conversation with his son, with his son, and he walks off the stage holding Holding his son's hand. It was such a perfect way to end that whole, you know, his, his whole act that night. It was just so Mm -hmm. well done, Yeah, you know, and that's one of the things that he did well. And because of his acting, background he he could pull those stories together like that and but and it's funny you say prior because i find that prior he wasn't a black comic he wasn't you know just what he transcended all races because i know so many white friends that label him as one of their all-time favorites black friends you know everybody he just influenced comedians in general but i but i think one of the things that's interesting is that prior was really really good at taking adversity in yes. his personal life well said and making it into hilarious jokes and bits and so i could see based yeah. on what i've seen of your comedy and yes. your bio i could see how he must have influenced you because yeah. he probably you probably learned from him that oh i could take this adversity in my life and turn it into something yeah. funny hey buddy got a light <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah i mean his was you know i mean shooting the car <laughs> you know when he talks about shooting the car yeah. you know here's the thing where he was literally arrested for domestic abuse and he turns it into a hilarious bit you know um so so it, they were your you know i'm sure they were kind of you know influences when you first started doing comedy is that kind of how you approached it 
I'm going to take what happens to me in everyday, my everyday life, not just everyday life, but my everyday life, and I'm going to try and make it funny. Yeah, and you know, I I looked at things differently, so I would try to, I would try to make it more broad, but everything, mm-hmm. all my better stuff is personal to me. Right. All yeah. the jokes that I'm invested in are funnier to other people. Like I, I have this, I have this bit I've been working on and like about animals with mental illness. Yeah. And like, I, I, I was, could you imagine an owl with OCD? Who, who he, but he has to say it five times. Otherwise he blows up. <laughs> hoo, hoo, hoo. And like, I want to <laughs> keep adding to that. Yeah. Because it's silly. And right. I love, right. I just, I love being real, but I love being silly even more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and silly is always, and we, we just literally talked about this last week. We did a panel show uh, where we talked about uh, Saturday Night Live and mm-hmm. we talked about a particular season, but we were talking about how they've kind of lost something. And that's what they've lost is the silliness. They weren't, they got so worried about being political that mm-hmm. they lost the silliness of the of of the show. Yeah, they still occasionally will have some good, you know, some good sketches. But it's that are rare. silly. But it's rare. It's more trying to be, um, trying to be political. You know, trying right. to do like the news of the day or what politician did something that week. You know, right? Because um, even the season that we studied, even when they brought a politician in, which was Ronald Reagan, yeah, they didn't talk about the politics. Of the no, day. they made they, it silly. They, they made him a, a a caricature of himself. Yeah, right. And I'm made it fool. silly and fun. Yeah, and you know, so it was so different than now. Because kind of going back and restudying those old episodes and looking at the characters they created and stuff like that, it was hilarious because, right. like you said, it was silly. It was adult silly, but it was silly. Right. Yeah, I, I when people ask me what kind of comic I'm like, I'm like, I'm I, I say I'm a mixture between Williams and Hedberg. Yep. Mitch OK, Hedberg. yeah, I see that. Yeah. Well, it's funny when you said that you were still doing drugs on, you know, when you first started doing comedy, I immediately thought of Mitch Hedberg doing I used to do drugs. I still do drugs, but I. But also, I used, used to, to do him do too. Him too. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I loved so him. Neat. He was he taken way too soon, but he oh. was so underrated. I, he, you know, I follow. There's a Hedberg uh, like tribute thing on TikTok where they just show clips of him, and such I such a unique I love voice, it. Oh, such God. a unique just voice, the, the, a unique way of looking yeah. at, at things. You know, so. So now you you've been doing it now for you know twenty something years. What are some of the wow moments for you that you've had? You know, like oh, in God. other words, either people that you've gotten to work with, places. or places that you've gotten to do where you're like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm on this stage. I mean, you kind of mentioned one earlier with the, you know, amateur night at the Apollo. That's a yeah. pretty, that's yeah. a pretty big one. And he you know? started well, off that way. Yeah, well, right. I, yeah, how do you top that? Black people love me. Like, really, um, I was gonna yeah. say. Because I've heard from other, you know, comics, they're not forgiving audiences at the Apollo. No, no, but if they love you, they really, really love, love you. you. Yeah, and and that's like I would, I would perform in front of a black audience, hands down, more than I would. I would love to perform in front of a black audience more than I would love to perform in front of a white audience. Really. Like, they're they're more reserved and oh the white audiences yeah 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 so well and like like scott said if they like you if a black audience really likes you they're gonna let you know right and so if you if you do well in front of them then yeah you're gonna get more uh more of a response but where you know any other uh folks that you've gotten to work with or you know open up for i mean we've all you know uh, like opened I, up for a bunch Patrice of people o'neill ralphie may the oh, i'm met them, amazing so i got to do i was doing the um short bus comedy tour 
back in. <laughs> I, I was a huge Opie and Oz. Anthony fan, <laughs> and I listened to every episode. And it's kind of funny because when I was reviewing your website and I saw the audio clip I of you on their show, and I remember Twitchells and all, all that whole time that you guys were on. And yeah. But it was funny because I immediately recognized Patrice, Patrice loved going, you. This is a funny motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Patrice loved you. Yeah. He, he goes, This ain't what it's funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. Did. He was, he Several was times. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was uh, he was a great guy. We both knew him. Uh, funny, he was the doorman at the comedy club that I used to go to before mm-hmm. he started doing comedy. Yeah. He was just the big doorman, you know, Patrice. Pretty and then all of a sudden, I walk in one night and I go, "Fucking Patrice, the doorman is on stage. What the fuck is going on?" And man, he was killing it from the very beginning. He was yeah. he was smart to move when he did, um, yeah. you know, because he, he obviously had a talent and he got big. Um, and but not man, just weight wise. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was he dick. was great. No. Well, you mentioned Ralphie May, too. He's another one that was a big yeah. dude that wasn't. Yeah, you know. he was. He was he was really nice, too. Yeah, um, I like <clears throat> and I just that that show changed everything for me like yeah that, being on that show i i went to do a show in uh i was in new jersey somewhere in new jersey performing um like at an elephant and castle restaurant <laughs> uh comedy cabaret probably and i did the show i had a great set i the show was over i was online for the bathroom some guy comes up to me and tells me, man, you were great. I heard you on ONA. I drove two and a half hours to see you. Wow. wow. Yeah. And like I said, thank you. And then I did the math. That's like a seven hour commitment. Right. I was like, holy wow. shit. I'm, I'm like a job to this guy. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And that freaked me out. Like that was where that someone would drive that far to yeah yeah, to see you. Wow. Yeah, the anxiety started to get because I I literally thought, what if I sucked? (laughs) Right. Yeah. What if this guy heard me on the radio for three minutes, thought I was hilarious, and then fucking hated my act? Yeah. Right. So, I am like that was right around the time I started to think about quitting. Really. I, I I self-sabotaged all the time. Like I did this uh I did this workshop where we would perform in front of, in front of Kirsten Ames, who was the uh town coordinator for the HBO Comedy Festival. Yep. So everyone would go up, the, the comics would go up, do two minutes, and then she would critique us mm-hmm. and she would say, you know, I would do this differently. I would do this i put this here yeah. mm-hmm. and i went up and i did my couple of minutes and she goes that was really funny send me a tape i want to see more wow and i never sent the tape oh, i was oof. so afraid oh um, my god yeah because n- what if i send the tape and i actually get in and i actually get on and right. and then i suck yeah right. wow yeah, those demons play fucking tricks on you. And but I'm telling you, I'm head. not doing that anymore. Any opportunity now, I'm like, yep, I'm there. <laughs> you take it. Yeah, no, that's it. You have to take the opportunities. You can't be afraid because you're never going to move forward if you don't. You it, know, it's right. tough though when you're in your own head. Right. No, you I can get it. talk yourself out of anything. Yeah. At, at times, because of self doubt and those type of things. So I get that. You know, I think we've all, you know, anybody that's had struggles like you have, you have that moment of self-doubt where you can just say it's easier to just not do it than potentially deal with right. the failure and, the, you know, the anything else that could come along with it. So you'd rather just not do it than, yeah. than deal with all that. So I kind of I, I kind of get that. But, you know, on top of the, the, the comedy and all the other stuff that you've done, do you do, if I read correctly, because you have two websites, basically, you do do some public speaking, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm in fact, I'll be in it, it pays a lot better than stand up. Yeah. Tell you that oh, we, 
We've got a very yeah. we've got a good friend. You heard me may have heard me mention him earlier tonight. Uh, uh, he's a comic here in Rhode Island named Mike Murray. He was born deaf, and when he what? Was, <laughs> when he was forty, we bust his balls all the time. But when he was forty years old, he had cochlear implants put in, and so then he uh-huh. he he could hear. And then his bucket list thing was to be a comic, and now he's been a comic for like 10, 12 years. Uh, yeah, and he's and he does great. But we've told him I actually used to belong to Toastmasters, which is a public speaking club. And I used to tell him, come with me. And he came with me for a couple of months. And I'm like, Mike, work on your keynote speech. You have such a great concept of overcoming adversity. But the difference is, you know, if you're a public speaker and you make someone you make the audience laugh five times in an hour, you're a superstar. As comics, we're trying to make them laugh every 20 seconds. So even if you're making them laugh every five minutes, you're a, you're an amazing public the speaker. The bar is so low. Right, exactly. Well, yeah. you know, who's your buddy there we had on? We had Darren LaCroix Darren on. LaCroix. Yeah. This, guy, this guy was a comic and belonged to Toastmasters. And he was, he was an okay comic, but he wasn't lighting the world on fire. The last time I worked with him, he opened up for me and he bombed. And... <laughs> Next thing you know, I joined Toastmasters and I say I'm a comic and people are like, do you know Darren LaCroix? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. yeah, why? Like, I, yeah, I know Jesus, you know. And they're like, he's the world champion of public speaking from 2001 or whatever year it was. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, there's this international contest you know, you start at your club level, you go to your district, your region, and national, and, and then international. He was the international public speaking What was his talk? Winner. I don't know. You know what? He teaches courses now on how to inject humor into your speeches. Yeah. And and his website has a picture of him in front of his convertible Mercedes yes. outside of his house in Las Vegas. So I guess he's doing Overlooking okay. Overlooking a beautiful canyon. Yeah, he's doing what better. A douche. He's yes, not, that's no, what we said. He's an awesome, awesome <laughs> guy. He's actually we, a really nice guy. We had him on a couple of years ago on the okay. podcast, but he even mentioned it. He goes, last time I worked with you, Ace, I bombed. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, you're doing better. You're not sitting in your fucking basement right now. You're probably driving driving around in your Mercedes convertible. But but we tell Mike all the time, this is what you need to do, man. You're going to make 10 times more public speaking at corporate events than you are doing stand up, mm-hmm. you know? Almost and wish I had a disability. Just so he, I, no, he, I'm, not, I'm only kidding. I Mike could, had, uh, we could make that happen. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure. I'm you, sure. you and him should pair up. Actually, yeah, you guys would. Be you great guys would. Together. Yeah, a great one-two punch. Well, you know what? I'm producing uh, 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 the first ever disability comedy festival. Are you really? Uh, yeah, 2024. May oh, we'll definitely let him know. Well, I yeah. stubbed my toe yesterday. Does that count? You're I got in. a hangnail. Get me in. Nice. You're I got in. a hangnail. I can't uh, use this finger. Why not? Come on. <laughs> I've had two carpal tunnel surgeries. Do I get in? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking use that wrist. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear my hand braces. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Whatever it takes. I don't care. So, so let's talk a little bit how did you get hooked in with the public speaking side did someone suggest that you do it or did you you do it on your own i so i i got um so i'm a so i'm a social worker so i would present at conferences and i they would love me at conferences because i could make a i could be talking about death and make you laugh and so you know, then it just spiraled from there. I I worked with Judy Carter, who does some yep. programs. We, we had awesome. Her. We She's had awesome. Judy on the podcast I last year. Her. I love I her. I love her. She was so funny. At the beginning of the show, she goes, now, how long is this show? And we're like, mm-hmm. well, we, we want to be respectful of your time, usually like 45 minutes to an hour. And she goes, well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Hour and a half later, we got off. <laughs> she <laughs> was like, I had so much fun with you guys. We were like, oh, yeah. thank you, Judy, because we've up. looked up to Judy from, you oh, know, forever years. I mean, forever. she wrote the comedy Bible. So. She wrote the book. She wrote the book. Exactly. So uh, so you got hooked in with her. Yeah. And and she was so giving and so awesome. And so I just started preparing things and putting them out there. And 
it works. Yeah. And so did you get a, did you get like a, an agent for, or anything like that? Or I'm you do still it on your shopping own? around. I'm really? actually doing, yeah, I'm actually doing, um, APCA, an APCA conference for some, for public speaking. Uh -huh. So APCA is like NACA's, yep. uh, retarded brother. So um, <laughs> that I might not open with that at the yeah, conference. Yeah, you may not want to do that. Saying, no, at the I'm not going to say that. Yeah, that. That might not get you a lot of work. Hey, just I saying. Hey, it's short bus with me. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here on APCA. You guys are like the retarded brother of NACA. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious opening. Or if you're in Boston, the retarded. Oh, the retarded one. It would be hilarious and it would kill on me. Yeah, chance yeah it would kill any chance of getting an agent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. all the, is this thing on? Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so I, I want to show you something. I forget how to share on this. Yeah, thing. there is a way to share your screen. I think it's uh, present. Okay. So, um, slides, no, I have no slides, your computer. Um, let me, let me say, I'm going to show you the logo. A buddy of mine did it. It looks fucking amazing. I'm, I'm this a, is I'm, for the comedy festival. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm afraid a naked selfie is going to pop up. Yeah. In right. A second. <laughs> Are you going to send us a dick pic, Mike? Well, get my dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm having that mole removed next week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God this is only an audio Does podcast. This looks big yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Should I get this checked out? Is this a bad rash? Does this look normal? Yeah. <laughs> so you were saying you you're 21 years in? I'm 21. He's 34. He started at a place called Periwinkle's Comedy Club. Um, my start was my buddy uh, Cal Verducci, who's uh, now retired from comedy, unfortunately. Um, he was a working comic, and he had me go see him on a Sunday night showcase, and we lied <laughs> to the club manager and told him that I was a working comic from out of town that was looking to do a spot and the guy let me do five minutes that night and they threw me up on stage and I did my five minutes in about three minutes because I was so <laughs> nervous and uh, that was my first time on stage at a place called the Comedy Palace in North Andover, Massachusetts. You and killed, then huh? I was it was all right. It was fine. There was like six people in the audience. It was a Sunday night. It was a February. It was a cold night. You know, it was it was, <laughs> it was a dark, cold night. I it was February. Honestly, I cannot even remember what the crowd did or didn't do. I just remember reciting everything I had memorized and, and you know, just bailing out at that point. And, uh, you know, after that, I booked another night at the Comedy Connection in Boston. And I, that night, I remember vividly. Mm. You know, that was such a, a cool experience that night, um, which was my second time on stage. And, uh, you know, uh, from there, it was like, that's it. The hook was set. And I was, I'm done. I, I got to do this, you know, because I, you know, no matter how good or bad you did, it was like, I know I can do this. Yep. And you just keep going back and, and perfecting it. And even now, you know, you know, you, you now at this point, you've been doing it long enough that you're going to, if you do 10 shows, nine will be good. One of them might not be great, but it's still right. good enough that you're like, yeah, I'm going to just, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm working. I, I can keep here. doing this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, right. It's like, and sometimes you have good has, days at work. Right. Someone I was going to say. Me, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. <laughs> We're on it's a delay. No, listen. no, no. I, some days you have good days at work and some days you have bad days at work, right. no matter what kind right. of work you do, you know? Yeah. When I was a, when I was a therapist, sometimes I'd help people. Sometimes I tell them to kill themselves, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they jump out the window. You, you can't all be winners. Or, you win some, you, you lose know, some. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. My brother goes, I, I guess I can close job. this case and the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother goes, I could do that job. Don't jump. It's not worth it. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't listen. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oops. So as we I have uh, as, the share screen up, let me show you. All right. Yeah, please, please. Do you can you see it or no? Not yet. It's in the, it's in the bottom. Can I share this or? Oh, it hold says on. It's sharing. Yep, I got to add to the to the stream. Okay. Hold on. Oh, there you go. 
Oh, oh, that's awesome. Stand up if you can comedy festival. We actually yeah. have a couple of friends that will be uh, applying to this festival. That's yes. awesome. awesome. That, awesome. Tyler would be Tyler perfect Hitler for this. Would be, we got another guy who, uh, when he was a baby, he had um, he had meningitis. And so he uses a walker um, to, uh, you know, to get around. I mean, he has use of his legs, but they're very, very weak. So he uh, he uses this like... It's kind of like a walker, but it's the walker that you can. It's the lazy walker, you know, the kind that you can sit on. Right. If you get too tired, or if <laughs> so you're lazy. You use it for pity points. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, but yeah. but he's just a he's a great sport about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a very funny comic. He he's been doing it about five years now, and and he's come a long way. Very 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 quickly. fast. He but he hustles. He gets on every show. That, he works he six sees, seven nights a week. If he sees a show posted online he's literally hitting the booker up going hey can i get a guest spot can i get a guest spot so he he works at it you know that's that's still my hardest like thing is putting myself out there and being like hey could i get a spot because yeah. I'm, in my head i'm like you're you're a loser no one wants to say you're you no you can't think like that i know but it's one thing do. if you we think like those moments. it's one thing if you think like hey i'm not gonna ask to get a, a free spot i do this for for professional money right you know? right Th that you know that's what keeps me from doing it as much more so not that I, I wouldn't do open mics or anything because over the past couple of years we've started to go to some open mics with me, it's just I got three kids, and, and you know now they're all teenagers, so I've got a little bit more freedom to go out. Right. But it's uh, you know it, it was tough when the kids were little. I'm not going to leave on a Wednesday night to go to an open mic for no money, and you know yeah. leave leave well at the time my wife, but you know my ex, uh, you know leave her home with three kids. It's one thing to do it if you're making money, but you can't do it for free at that point. Right. You know. Right. So. So let me ask you this. We, yes. we always wrap up with the same question uh, for people. And uh, we want we want to know about a funny, bad gig story. And this is the gig that was so bad the night of that it wasn't funny. But the further away you get from it, you're sitting in the green room with folks and everyone's telling their as my, as Scott calls it, one up stories. And uh, you're like, oh, you think that was bad? Oh, listen to this. But. People are like actually laughing because, of course, as comics, we all find the funny. We love in our, our friend's, friend's pain. Yeah, in our friend's pain. So. This is this is the gig that made you go. You know, drugs and alcohol aren't that bad. Yeah, yeah, I might go back to that. <laughs> I could, I could do this. Um, like, well, I have great advice. Like, everybody should try crack. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I don't know if I'd it's, use great in that statement, but the, you know, it's it's the best drug. Just try it. See if you like it, but. Here's my rule. You got to try it three times just to make sure. Like, <laughs> just to, just to just get to, addicted and yeah. give the social workers the rule, job security right. is what rule he's saying. Rule of threes. Rule yeah. of like, threes. I, lo I loved crack. My gastrointestinal system did not. Uh -huh. I, w I left. I, I once like massive diarrhea on the subway. It was like the, the, the the crowd parted like the Red Sea. It was oh my awful. god! Oh. <laughs> how did we get from funny bad gig to shitting myself on a, a subway? I don't know how that happened, but, but that's all right. I like that. I story. was telling jokes on the subway. Oh, all right. <laughs> and shit himself. I killed. I killed. I killed. Yeah, yeah. You. I cleared the room. <laughs> or the car. <laughs> uh. So the the worst. Like the worst experience. I was in LA doing a couple of shows and I I was I went up and no one is fucking laughing. Mm -hmm. Like no one comic after comic, they're like, it's the roughest room. And I get up on stage and I just I see one guy with his hands folded and I hate that. Oh yeah. I so, like when you're I'm like, and so I start going, oh, your hands are folded. What, I, am I making a mess? And then I get up in his face and just start yelling, like Kinnison. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, come on, you can laugh. Don't laugh. Don't fucking laugh. 
and it was awful. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. I was, I walked off stage and the other comics were like, that was so funny. And I'm <laughs> like, my soul is dying inside. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we find it funny when we see you do that. Exactly. Because right. exactly. your soul is dying. Right. Ours is alive and enjoying life at that very moment. And it's so funny how non-comics cannot understand how we can simultaneous, simultaneously love watching someone who we love and who is a friend absolutely die up there. Right. It's it's a contradiction, right? You would never go to a regular day job, like a social worker job, where you'd like look at your friend who's a social worker who just literally lost a patient to suicide. You'd never be like, Oh man, that's awesome. How cool is that? <laughs> you job, did you, fucking, <laughs> you loser. You fucked up. <laughs> you know? You'd never do that in your day job, but for some reason, as comics, we love doing that. I, I tried to tell somebody one time, I was I was at the Comedy Connection Faneuil Hall, one of their showcase nights they used to have on weeknights, and I told a new joke, and at the end of the joke, literally, the room is so silent, you could hear the compressor and the air conditioner kicking on. <laughs> it, the audience is dead silent, and the entire back of the room where all the comics sit, Bust out laughing so hard. It sounded like yeah. the joke killed, but, <laughs> but it was in only my the comic. Soul, I knew it was every comic going, wow, did that bomb hard <laughs> because it was so bad. Back in 95, my, my family came to the show, like one of the first shows I ever did. Mm -hmm. And there was this woman shadow boxing in the corner, a comic. And they watched her go up, and they she was so bad, and they were like, "She's gonna be great." Look, but at she her hyped hair. up, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And she was so bad; they were cracking up, and she thought she was killing because yes. they were laughing so much. That's right. Yeah, that's the difference between laughing at and laughing and with. laughing with. Right. Yes, right. which uh, not everyone has a true grasp of. No, no. Oh, Mike, this was fantastic. I'm so happy that you were able to come on tonight. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us is there I any love it, guys. is you. there anything we can plug for you your website social media anything yeah, um i'm trying to grow my instagram so all right it's, uh at funny man mike cateo um okay. and same thing with twitter funny man mike is everything and okay. There's, okay there's a variation of it and I'll put a link to that in today's show notes. So anybody listening, if you want to check out Mike, just go to the show notes and the link will be there. Um, definitely a guy you want to check out. If you see him performing in your area, go yeah. check him out. His comedy is absolutely hilarious. You're going to hear not only a great story, but you're going to laugh your ass off as well. Absolutely. And if you work for a corporation and they're looking for funny public speakers talking about overcoming adversity, but in a funny way, Definitely reach out and find him on social media um, as well. Yes, and we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely get you hooked up with um, with the two guys that we were talking about because I think they'd be great, great yeah, for your festival. That would work yeah. awesome Absolutely. for your festival. Yeah, definitely. And if you're ever up in New England, let us let know, us man. know. Yeah, I I'm gonna I'll prepare to come up there. I'm trying to book a show in Boston. But uh, oh, that oh, would yeah. be great. Yeah, we'd love to come see you. And, let and us meet, know. Yeah, hang out in person. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. All right, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. We'll talk Have to you. Have a good one. Bye. Take care. Too. And that was Mike Cateo, everybody. Um, super nice guy. Very funny comedian, like we said. And, man, talk about some obstacles. Uh, yeah. You know, God. Lord. But I love the fact that he's doing, like, how, how long have we known Mike Murray? Like 10 years? Yeah. And he's been talking about wanting to do that, to and it, catapult yeah. into public speaking. And here's someone who, you know, who's done it. And uh, and what does Mike got to do? Catch HIV? No, <laughs> no. I mean, he's got enough problems. You know, he's got Mike's problem is Mike has too many ideas. Mike is a great idea, man. He's not a planner and an executor. Right. That's what it is. But, but Mike, yeah, because Mike. And comes, we're talking about Mike Murray, not Mike Cateo. But, yeah, Mike way, Murray. Yeah. Mike Murray, the deaf comic. Yeah. He'll come up with amazing ideas. And instead of executing them, he thinks about the next idea. He and then the next idea. Yeah, he's got like adult ADHD or something. He does. He's always moving he on to the next does. thing. 
He, he, um, his and I love him. His but, intentions are well. Yeah. He just never executes because he's too busy coming up with the next idea. I got a great idea. Put that motherfucker in a think tank oh and just let him God. spew just ideas. Spew ideas and then give it to people that can actually execute them. Yeah, them, I exactly. Know. Exactly. So well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that because I did. That, yeah. was, that was awesome getting to know him and hearing his backstory and everything. Yeah, and I uh, hope he does get guy. up here. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. Him. Yeah, he definitely. Might be good, he might be good at the Bradley. I was thinking you it the whole it too? time. Yeah. The whole time. I think he would do great at the Bradley Theater. Absolutely. Um, so listen, folks, thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate it. As we've said before, uh, tell a friend about us. That's, that's the best way to help the podcast. Uh, tell a friend about us. Uh, five-star written review. We got a fair amount of five-star re- reviews. Like we We've got a good amount. It helps with the algorithms. It yes. helps more people find us. When people type in comedy podcast, when they want to hear a new comedy podcast, it goes by reviews, you know, reviews help reviews. as much as anything, yeah. if not more than everything. And you, we've mentioned in the past our Patreon page. You guys don't seem too keen on that, which is fine. <laughs> if you want to help out another way, we do have a new link. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. One time gift. We you, would rather it be buy me a bourbon. So it's called buy me a coffee. We'll be the honest. The money will go to bourbon. We're, we're not, not buying coffee yeah, with it. No, we're not. It's gonna it's gonna restock the bourbon fund. <laughs> exactly. So if the link is in the show notes. Click on that. One time donation, any amount, help a couple of guys out to restock the bourbon shelves. That'd be great. We would greatly appreciate it. Awesome. And, uh, you know, we've got some great guests coming up uh, in a few weeks. Uh, I don't even know. 2023 is going to be a great year. It's going to be an awesome year. We're really branching out. We're getting a lot of people from all over the country, you know, so which is what we've wanted. Some really different, unique guests, some awesome people for you guys to learn about and get to know. So we're excited for this year. So uh, listen, folks, tune in. And And other other than that, that, we will see you next week. (laughs) 